Welcome to my 100th subscriber special. I won't admit I should have put it on on Tuesday morning because as we speak we actually have 148 subscribers. So for the 200th subscriber special I'm going to make that video next week and who knows in a few weeks I'm sure we will have 200 subscribers. So of course thanks for subscribing and I aim on these videos to educate and of course entertain. So I didn't really know what uh, vehicle to do and I saw this one in a book, I thought it is a really crazy shape, what can we learn, see what people think about it. And also, I aim to do a second video on the Lockheed Hudson. Over 10,000 views that video has now, so can't wait for that one. Enjoy. And here's to 200. Let's get there. One of the most weird aircraft to have ever flown. The Northrop N1M Jeep of 1940. In 1939, John K. Jack Northrop formed a new aircraft company, Northrop Aircraft Incorporated, as a logical extension of Northrop's lifelong interest in aerodynamically clean aircraft. The new company would immediately begin the development of a true flying wing aircraft, an aircraft without the weight and drag of a fuselage, tail or engine nestles. The first of these designs, the N1M, Northrop Model 1 mock-up Jeep emerged in July 1940 as a boomerang-shaped prototype built of wood and tubular steel. The N1M was a flying aerodynamic testbed designed to be easily configured as engineers searched for improved stability, control and performance, although overweight and chronically underpowered. The Jeep showed enough promise to enc encourage the development of the improved M9M and the post-war B-35 and all jet B-49 flying wing bombers. The N1M was given to the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum in 1946. This aircraft was restored over a four-year period beginning in 1979. The Jeep's cockpit was small and crowded and pilot visibility was poor. To improve the latter, the seat was raised several inches. A hole was cut through the sliding canopy to accommodate the pilot's head. Sounds very uncomfortable to me. Exiting the cockpit in any emergency would have been difficult, and if the propellers were turning, extremely dangerous. The Jeep's familiar flight controls operated. The elevators and ailerons were combined. On the wing's trailing edge, pulling or pushing the control column moved the elevators. In unison, affecting the aircraft's pitch, turning the control wheel staggered the elevators, creating roll. The Jeep, of course, had no tail or rudder, but the rudder pedals still controlled the yaw through the split flaps or clamshells, which opened at either wingtip. The split flaps could also be opened to increase the glide angle or attack as air brake. The throttle quadrant and mixture controls were in easy reach on the right side of the cockpit. The temperature masking tape labels were practical, Expedient. benefiting the Jeep's status as a prototype. Magneto switches were just forward and the carburetor heat controls just after the switches along the right side floor, selected fuel tanks and landing gear and flat positions with a long handle for wobble pump and elevation pitch trim crank was placed over the pilot's right shoulder. The left side of the cockpit, blocked by four and a half movements of the heavy flight control column, was relatively empty and a hand pump for the hydraulic system was on the floor beside the seat and a handheld fire extinguisher was under the canopy combing. The engine fire extinguisher switch was forward to the left side of the instrument panel, a difficult reach past the control column but fortunately never needed. The instrument panel was simple with most gauges monitoring the engine flight instruments including an altimeter, airspeed indicator and turn and bank indicator. A floor mounted gauge for the hydraulic system was removed before the aircraft came to the museum. It appears that no radio was ever installed. Other flying wings by Northrop was the N9M, YB35 and YB49. 
I may do videos about these in the future. So the nine first flew on December the 27th, 1942, and there was four built. There is also a restored version that flies at air shows. The 35 first flew on the 25th of June, 1946, and the very sleek 49 first flew on the 21st of October, 1947. Is it any wonder in the late 40s, and is that people thought they saw UFOs with these flying about stats crew one length 17 foot 11 inches wingspan 38 feet 8 inches height 4 feet 11 inches wing area 33 meters gross weight 3900 pounds and power plant it seems like there was two different power plants for this particular aircraft obviously it was a test bed so i'm not surprised so the first if i can pronounce this correctly like oh me or 145 four-cylinder horizontally opposed air-cooled piston engine 65 horsepower each engine because of course there is two engines on this aircraft but there was also two different power plants and the second power plant was two franklin 6ac 264f2 six cylinder air cooled horizontally opposed piston engines producing 117 horsepower each maximum speed 200 miles per hour and looking at the shape of it i'm really not surprised range was 300 miles and surface ceiling was only 4,000 feet first flight the 3rd of july 1940 retired 1945 and of course for experimental use only the one thing that strikes me about this particular aircraft is obviously the shape of it it's amazing um what the americans could design in 1940 i know we had the spitfire we had the hurricane but this thing is so futuristic even in 2021 so yeah really amazing what they could do obviously the germans they had the horton brothers i believe they were called with the flying wing that was actually the very first stealth aircraft and the americans did test that and i believe it's in a museum storage area the original one it's without its wings of course um not too sure which aircraft museum that is i don't know if it's the smithsonian or it's the um, Seattle Museum of Flight, which to be honest, I would love to go to. Um, or even if it's the Evergreen Air Museum, but I don't think it is that one. Does this aircraft remind you of something from 1940? It would do, because the same company built it 